So, King George. Yeah? The colonies in America just won a revolution, making them an independent country. France just went through another violent revolution and is trying to go to con war with every country in Europe. And it seems that ideas of democracy and liberty are spreading everywhere and are probably going to get to a lot of British colonies. So, what are we going to do? Start taking American sailors from trade ships. You are so incredibly dumb. Bonjour, mon ami. Now, what the heck is the War of 1812, you may be asking. Well, since I'm on a time limit and have a lot to go over, I'll just start with the basics. Our favorite pastry chef, France, has just come out of the most chaotic revolution in history with the ideas of freedom, liberty, and democracy. But they ended up having this guy ruling over everything so kind of ironic thing. now napoleon wants to like take over the world or something so he goes on in full invasion of europe and he wins he's sort of like your generic uh comic book bad guy who wants to take over the world but he like also owns like the best bakery in the world too so so the new kid on the block america isn't really sure about what to do they're trying their best to stay neutral, but when British ships start pulling up and taking American sailors, they're like... Hey, uh, guys, can you maybe stop? No. Dude, what the heck? What do you mean? Why are you taking our stuff? Because we needed to fight France. And plus, what are you gonna do about it? Well, I... Exactly. But I do see your point. I'll I stop. declare war on you. What? Uh-oh. In a huge mistake, two messages were sent at the same time. America sent a declaration of war, and Britain sent a message saying that they would stop. Well, poop. America had already been having problems with the Native Americans in the West, because a Native American by the name of Tecumseh I don't really know how to pronounce it. Anyway, he formed a huge Native American confederacy, which was battling the then small American army. Can I just say something? America wasn't the huge powerhouse it was today. It is today. Back then, we had like a couple thousand men in our army. To compare, France had one million men, and Britain had 250,000. We had like 13,000. We're like a scrawny young country. Another problem the U.S. had was Canada. Canada was a British colony, right in America's backyard. Now, to be honest, you've probably never gone to war before, but I don't think it's that pleasant to have an enemy right next to you. Now, because of what was happening in Europe, Britain had diverted a lot of attention and men away from Canada. What made this okay was... America's men still look like this, when in reality, we should have had professionally trained soldiers like this. So going into the war, I think it was a pretty fair fight. The first battle was the Battle of Tippecanoe. 1,540 American troops faced off around 500 Native Americans. The battle began and lasted two hours. In the end, 63 Americans were killed and 126 were wounded. On the other side, 65 Native Americans were killed and 80 were wounded. This was considered an American victory. And here's the war overall. America, trying to be the country you shouldn't mess with, invaded Canada. James Madison was like, I want all of the maple syrup. What was the point of that joke? I just like drawing famous people. Anyway, the invasion failed. Obviously. There were a lot of other invasions that also failed horrifically. Anyway, a man named William Henry Harrison went, We're not failing to invade Canada because our troops are bad. It's because the British controlled Lake Erie. You are so incredibly dumb. So the Battle of Lake Erie began, and surprisingly, the Americans won. Yeah! Or, in case you're British. Yeah! 
The next major battle was the Battle of Thames, or Thames, and surprisingly the Americans won again. But then, something happened. Britain won the war against France, and now they had all of their troops available to fight America. And so the next thing they did was invade Washington DC and burn it down to the ground. So now America's not really feeling so hot. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, but Tecumseh was killed in the Battle of Thames. And his dream of an all Native American Confederacy also died. And the British Native American Alliance died. So a lot of things died that day. Then an up and coming general by the name of Andrew Jackson attacked the Creeks, a Native American tribe, and forced them off their land, which is kind of sad. Oh, say can you see? That song is relevant because the battle we're talking next is the Battle of Fort McHenry. Now, a guy named Francis Scott Key was watching the battle with his friend Dr. Bean from a British ship because he had to bail Dr. Bean out of prison. Stupid Dr. Bean. So he decided to write a song and boom, the Star Spangled Banner was born. Again, America won, but wouldn't it have been ironic if they lost? This battle was in Baltimore, by the way. Do you remember Canada? I bet you do. The British are moving in from Canada and attacking Plattsburgh, a city near Lake Champlain, the best lake ever. This was a sea battle, so as the British troops moved in, boom! Kaplang! Sink. The Americans won again. This made the British be like, hey, dude, this is kind of dumb. Do you want to stop? Sure, but I won. No, I won. No, I won. No, I won. No, I won. So, in 1814, the Treaty of Ghent was signed. The treaty didn't stop anything that started the war, like impressment, so, yeah. So now the war's over. Boo! You thought the war was over? No, sir. Or ma'am. The Battle of Mardi Gras, I mean New Orleans. The British forces marched to fight the Americans who were hiding behind stuff. This made it easy for the Americans to just quickly pick off the British one by one. And that's the end of the war. Word finally got home that the war was over. And American victory? Eh, maybe. I think America won. I don't know. I know I'm forgetting a lot of stuff, like the Constitution. Um, but that's the only thing that comes to mind. And that was the War of 1812.